Do you ever find yourself making decisions fast on autopilot only to regret it later? It's a common struggle we all face, trying to balance our gut instincts with our rational thoughts. As you go through the maze of daily choices and judgments, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the sheer complexity of your own thought processes. Enter Daniel Kahneman's seminal work, Thinking Fast and Slow, a beacon of insight illuminating the complex landscape of human mind. Whether you're dealing with impulsive instincts that seem to hijack your rationality or striving to understand the subtle biases that shape your perceptions, this book offers invaluable insights on that has the potential to revolutionize your life. Let's start. Five best takeaways. System one and system to thinking. Our minds operate using two distinct systems, system one and system two. System one is like our autopilot. It works automatically and rapidly, requiring little effort or conscious control. This system handles intuitive, instinctual, and often subconscious thoughts. It's what we rely on for quick decisions like identifying emotions or reacting to sudden sounds. While system one is efficient, it's also where cognitive biases lurk, shaping our judgments without us even realizing it. On the other hand, system two is our deliberate analytical mode of thinking. It kicks in when we tackle complex problems, plan for the future, or carefully weigh options. Unlike System 1, System 2 demands more cognitive resources and energy, making it slower but crucial for critical thinking and reasoned decision-making. While System 1 is our default, System 2 is essential for making informed choices and navigating life's complexities. Understanding Heuristics Imagine heuristics as your brain's handy shortcuts for making decisions on the fly. They're like little mental hacks that help you navigate life without getting bogged down by every choice you encounter. For instance, picture yourself on a walk when suddenly you spot a snarling dog. Without even thinking, your brain jumps into action, using a heuristic to swiftly decide to steer clear of potential danger. It's a prime example of how these shortcuts allow us to react quickly when time is of the essence. But heuristics aren't just about survival instincts. They come into play in everyday situations too, like deciding what to eat for breakfast or which route to take to work. By drawing on past experiences and simple cues, heuristics let us make these decisions with minimal effort and maximum efficiency, the double-edged sword of biases. Imagine you have a mental toolbox full of shortcuts to help you make decisions quickly. These shortcuts are called heuristics. They're great because they save time and energy, but sometimes these shortcuts can lead us to make mistakes. These mistakes are called biases. They happen when our shortcuts don't work the way they should. For example, there's something called the availability heuristic. This is when we judge how likely something is based on how easily we can remember similar events. So if we hear about a plane crash on the news, we might start to worry more about flying, even though plane crashes are rare. Then there's confirmation bias. This is when we only pay attention to information that agrees with what we already believe. It's like we're wearing blinders that block out anything that doesn't fit our view of the world. Lastly, there's anchoring bias. This happens when our first impression of something influences all our later decisions about it. For instance, if someone tells us a high price for something first, we might end up thinking it's worth more than it really is. So while our mental shortcuts can be helpful, it's important to be aware of these biases so we can make better decisions. Prospect theory. Prospect theory is like a game changer in understanding how we make decisions. It shows us that we don't always think about gains and losses the same way. Imagine you have $100. Losing that money feels a lot worse than gaining the same amount feels good. It's like the pain of losing outweighs the joy of winning. Because of this, we tend to play it safe when it comes to gaining things, but take bigger risks to avoid losses. For example, we might hold on to a losing investment longer than we should just because we don't want to admit defeat. This way of thinking affects a lot of areas, like how we handle our money and even how policies are made. It reminds us that our decisions aren't always based on logic or what makes the most sense economically, but on how we feel about gains and losses. Overconfidence and illusion of understanding. Overconfidence and the illusion of understanding are like tricks our minds play on us, making us think we know more than we actually do. Picture this, you're feeling pretty confident about something. Maybe it's picking the right stocks or predicting the outcome of an election. But here's the thing, that confidence might not be based on solid facts. 
It's like we're fooling ourselves into thinking we've got it all figured out. This overconfidence can lead to some big mistakes. We might make overly optimistic predictions about the future or underestimate how unpredictable things really are. This happens a lot in areas like finance and politics, where people think they're experts but end up being way off the mark. Action plan. Here's a plan to help you tackle biases, think more critically, and make better decisions in your personal and professional life. Engaging system two for better decisions. In a world where speed often rules, taking a moment to pause and activate system two thinking can lead to better outcomes. This means stepping back from the immediacy of system one's intuitive reactions to analyze situations more thoroughly. By deliberating on the details and considering the broader implications of a decision, we can counteract the biases that System 1 might introduce. Slowing down allows us to tap into our analytical abilities, weighing options with a clear mind and a focus on rationality. This doesn't mean doubting every gut reaction or instinctual response. Rather, it's about recognizing when a situation warrants a deeper examination. For complex decisions, especially those with long-term consequences, Activating System 2 thinking helps us navigate potential pitfalls and make choices that are more aligned with our goals and values. Refining awareness and curiosity. To improve decision-making, it's vital to make a habit of questioning our biases. Our quick instinctual thinking, System 1, is efficient but prone to shortcuts that can lead to mistakes. By becoming aware of these biases, we can engage our analytical thinking, System 2, to examine and challenge our initial judgments. Curiosity about why we think a certain way helps uncover hidden biases. Asking questions like, why do I believe this? Or, what evidence supports this decision? Can reveal biases such as confirmation bias, where we favor information that agrees with our beliefs or availability heuristic, where we overestimate the likelihood of events based on their ease of recall. Broadening perspectives. Seeking out information that challenges our beliefs is key to overcoming biases and making better decisions. This means intentionally exposing ourselves to different viewpoints, data, and arguments. When we engage with contradictory information, our analytical thinking, System 2, gets to work. It helps us analyze evidence that our instinctual thinking, System 1, might overlook. This not only expands our knowledge, but also promotes critical thinking and open-mindedness. By embracing diverse perspectives, we become better equipped to tackle complex issues and make more informed decisions. Overcoming Wisati. To overcome the what you see is all there is, Wisati bias, it's crucial to look beyond the immediate information we're presented with. This means recognizing that our knowledge has limits and there could be important details we're missing. Actively seeking out additional data and alternative perspectives helps us make more informed decisions. By doing so, we consider a wider range of possibilities and outcomes. Expanding our view requires us to resist jumping to conclusions based on the first piece of information. Instead, we should ask ourselves what might be missing and seek evidence that contradicts our initial assumptions. This can involve consulting others with different viewpoints, doing more research, or simply taking time to think things through. If you have made it this far, Comment down below with the word 100% to confirm that you have received the knowledge from this video. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.